Do you have any tips on how to improve memory? Yes, okay, this is a wild literature and I love it and it's changing the way that I do things. I thought that to remember things, you're supposed to get really, really excited, really focused and remember them. And guess what? That's not how you do it. There are data and there are stories going back to medieval times that they used to teach kids things and then throw them in the river. There's a beautiful annual review of neuroscience written by the late James McGaw, a brilliant researcher who taught me that. And it turns out that if you want to remember something, you want to spike adrenaline after you acquired that information, after. That means the double espresso and the ice bath after you study for math, immediately after. And you think about this, you know, that makes perfect sense, right? Think about the one trial learning that nobody wants to experience, which is car accident or some traumatic thing. You didn't get the spike of adrenaline first, you got the spike of adrenaline after. Again, you know, I discourage the use of excessive stimulants or anything like that, but if you're going to try and remember information, you need to get your brain and body into a high autonomic arousal state. Literally, you need to deploy adrenaline into your system after you have made the attempt to learn some information. So much so that if you give people a beta blocker, after learning emotional information, they don't learn it as well. Incredible. And it's also true that if you tell yourself that something's really important to you, you'll, you'll be able to learn it better. If you meet people and they tell you their name and you forget two seconds later, well, you should probably be thinking, and now I do this, I meet people and I think, okay, what, what terrible thing did this person do? Just try and spike my adrenaline or something like that. It's a terrible trick, but I haven't figured out a better way, but that's actually one that data supported way to do that easily a dozen or more studies in humans on that very topic. I used to teach this course at Cold Spring Harbor on career development for scientists, and the, there's a lot in there, but the two things that are most important, I would say, are find non-destructive ways to reset your dopamine and your energy levels, and do those at least every three days. I used to work really hard on Mondays, really hard on Tuesdays, and I would not go in until the afternoon on Wednesdays, and sometimes not at all. And then I'd go in Thursday, Friday, and work really, really hard, and then not at all on Saturday, and then maybe do a little bit of work from home on Sunday, and I was very productive that way. Those breaks are absolutely key, and it's not encouraged so much in academic or tech or maybe anything now. I hear about so much stress and overwork. I say you just do it and let the results and your focus be the thing that defines you, not how many hours you're in there. But I realize there's a huge cognitive load and energetic load, and for that, I do think these non-sleep deep rest protocols are where it comes in really handy. There are at least two faculty I know at Stanford, one who's a so-called Howard Hughes investigator, and they take two 20 minute naps per day in their office. When this guy came and visited me years ago when I was at a different university, he took the time that we were supposed to meet in my office and talk about data. He asked if he could take a nap. And he gave a great talk that afternoon. So there you go. I, I do think you have to take control of your schedule and do those things.